Before I begin by talking about this next band, I need to set a little bit of a uh, little bit of an atmosphere for you. The 1980s. On the west and east coast of the United States, you had bands popping up right and left. Some of them had gathered major success, still have loyal fan bases to this day. Uh, you know, they've had over 30 years of great music. And then you have bands like this next band, who just put out one album and then disappeared off the face of the earth. Today I'm going to be doing a review of Commander's only release, The High and Mighty. Now, Commander is a power metal band from Los Angeles. Formed in 1985, they released The High and Mighty in 1987, and really the only public record of them even having that release is the notoriety they gained from Metal Massacre 7. With this album, it's power metal at its finest. Uh, it has that kind of, it has that, um, that 80s sound, that, um, that almost tape-like quality that you would expect from uh, a band like this from the 80s. And this album is full of synthesizers, acoustic interludes, uh, great riffing. These guys were heavily influenced by the new wave of British heavy metal movement. And uh, on some of their songs, like Kill the King, Terror, Wizard, and Knights of the Round Table, you ha that is apparent. The reason why I'm doing this album is because, well, this band had talent. And I was recently introduced to them, and only to find out that they only had one release. And with an album of this quality, it makes me wonder what happened. Were there just too many bands at the time and they were drowned out by other major releases? Or was there infighting within the band and they broke up? No one knows. I was fortunate enough to uh, have somebody um, send me this album so that way I could listen to it. And, because if you try to look for this album, you won't find it. It, it doesn't exist in digital format. And as far as I know, for physical format, it only exists on vinyl. The record label that they were signed with, I believe it's Ironworks, no longer exists. So it's just one of those things that is forever lost in time. And this band, they were really good. They remind me a lot of a more Americanized Halloween especially with songs like Die by the Sword, a nine minute long song which tells the tale of a man who is being wrongly executed in the medieval ages. Some highlights from this album, I would say, Give the Blade Shines On, Terror, Wizard, hell, just the whole album. If you can find this album, listen to it, because it's worth a shot. Danny here from Metal Couch, signing off.